Greetings, trombonists at large. I am the Vagrant Trombone, here tonight on a mid-October evening, 2023, to tie up some loose ends on a topic. Mutes! I've been going on for years about mutes, and I thought I would just kind of wrap things up a little bit about a mute that seems to be coming back into favor and some others that are kind of being left to the sands of time. When I was a young man, big bands dotted the land. There were regional orchestras here and there, and they could be satisfied with four mutes. That first and most important mute that you will ever own was the straight mute. Then, of course, for me, the second most important mute was a cup mute. Then I had a bucket and, of course, the lowly plumber's helper, the toilet plunger. And maybe I'd throw a pixie mute in there just for a little color. <coughs> But for the most part, my standard kit of mutes were these four mutes, and I could satisfy almost every gig with those four mutes. Now, as the big band era has seemingly waned away into the past, from the depths of the darkness, out of an even greater past, has returned to us in our musical stylings a piece of World War II ordinance that many of us believed and hoped would be lost to those same sands of time forever, and that would be the clear tone mute. Now you might be looking at that and saying, that's not a clear tone mute, that is a solo tone mute. And you would be right. You see, the solo tone mute was originally marketed by Shastock. When Humes and Berg made their version of it, it became the clear tone. But we in the trombone land still knowingly refer to this as the solo tone mute. And with the advent of a lot of Broadway-style shows that I've been playing that mimic 20-style music and a lot of little combos and 20-style bands, I find that I use this mute more than I use some of my others. <laughs> Old Humesenberg uh, stone lined clear tone mute, which is a solo tone mute, uh, was used extensively by Tommy Dorsey. And oftentimes, if I was playing in a band, I wouldn't need this mute because I wasn't playing first, so I wasn't playing any solos. And even the lead player might just use a cup mute. But I find that this mute is becoming very popular again, and I'm having to use it a lot. And one of the mutes that you will see when Tommy plays in a movie. Uh, big Band Wives, I think, Big Band Orchestra Wives, or Sonia Henney, he's not using a uh, solo tone mute. He's using this mute. This mute is a mellow wah mute. And uh, one day I was in a music store, and I saw it sitting up on the shelf, and I thought, hey, that's that mute that Tommy uses in that movie. So, of course, I had to buy it. Now, you're thinking, they don't really sound much the same, but uh, this mute has an advantage over the old solo tone in that, because it's shorter, I can do this. La, 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 la. I can, oop, <laughs> I can wah mellowly. And so that's one of the advantages to the mellow wah mute, which I've never seen a call for it, but eh, in case I need it, it's here. And uh, sometimes I prefer to use it over this mute just because it's a little more mellow sounding if I'm playing in a small group and it's a little easier to play. Now you might be thinking, I don't own one of those mutes, but I do own one of these. Now this is your classic Harmon mute stem in. For guys who like playing jazz, this is the mute of choice. And you might think, oh, I can just use this instead of a solo tone, and you can get away with it if you don't have anything else, but they they do not equate. They're not the same. <laughs> but they're not really the same. You can just hear that difference.
This just has that thin, narrow, focused ribbon mic sound, whereas this is definitely more of a contemporary kind of noise. And this mute, of course, can do something that this mute can't, and that is I can play behind the mute without a stem. <laughs> Because of that advantage, it gives the Harmon mute a contemporary edge in design. Now, one of the mutes that sounds very much like a Harmon mute also is one of these. This is a bubble mute. And though it's meant to compete with a Harmon, I think it has kind of a nicer sound. Dang. <laughs> It kind of cuts the middle road between the Harmon and the solo tone, with still having the advantages of being able to pull the pin out of it, uh, the stem out of it, and be able to use it stemless, where it, it, it sounds pretty cool too. <laughs> One of the mutes that I stumbled across in a music store one day was this mute. This is a Selmer, what is it called? Styratone mute. And this mute, I bought it and immediately regretted it when I got it out of the box and started playing it. It's made out of plastic and it sounds okay. <laughs> And it works just fine, but man, it was just, it, it's kind of junky sounding. But it turned out that that was going to be all right for me because one of the mutes that I also have is this horrible thing. This is called a buzz wow mute. And the buzz wow mute has three holes drilled in the bottom and it has these uh, reeds from. Uh, harmonica, not harmonicas, um, kazoos. These are kazoo reeds in two of these. And then the third one is just a vent to let the air out. Now, this was an idea that King Oliver came up with, where he drilled out the bottom of a cup mute and he stuffed a bunch of harmonicas into it. And I guess Humes and Berg liked the idea. So they made their own design. And this is a really old one. This has the actual uh, like wax paper things inside of it that make the buzzy noise, kind of like the King Oliver mute. The later iterations of this mute, they used metal washers, which definitely more raspy, more annoying, and more fun to play. But this mute's just a dog. It's, it's pretty bad. Just... Just horribly noisy. But one of the problems with this mute is it's super stuffy down low. And because of that, for playing jazz on it, it it's... I worry that I'm just... That my pitch is going to be all over the boards. And what I found out with... I can take the stem out of this piece of garbage, and if I hold it just right, I can still get that buzzy kind of sound. <laughs> is I can actually play this one in tune and the notes center up so I find that I like this mute a little bit more. Now one of the mutes many times ago my, on one of my old videos where I was talking about cup mutes I mentioned that I had to rebuild one of my cup mutes and I had to get some Shastock mutes for uh, some cartoon sessions at Warner's. Well when I went to the music store to buy a couple of Shastock straights I happened to spy on the shelf this oddity. Now, in orchestras, I had seen only seen these for trumpets. I never, didn't even know they made one for trombone. And uh, this is a Shastock whisper mute. The whisper mute, I only have seen one call for it that anyone ever uses it on, and that is Fetz by Debussy. 
And um, when you see it, you buy it. So I bought it. That's my best trumpet impression I'm going to do tonight. But the whisper mute. Sitting next to that whisper mute was a mute that I suggest any bass trombone player should go out and buy. And that is this Jorao Harmon mute. Now, I had never seen a call for a Jorao Harmon mute. Never. Until I went to a record date for a TV show. And what did I see? Bass trombone Harmon. Fortunately for me, Andy had a date on his bass trombone. He had left his bass trombone meets in the car. And so he was able to go out on the break and he let me borrow his for the date, which has really saved my bacon. But I assure you, when lunchtime, when the lunch break came around, I got my car and I headed straight to Stein on Vine where I bought my own and came back for the second session with my own Harmon mute for bass trombone. And the reason why I suggest you own it is because it sounds cool. I mean, that sounds cool. Yeah, you hit some low notes on that, and it plays pretty nice. As well as, if you take the stem out, then you can sound just as cool as Miles Davis. Not at all. But... It's kind of a unique and interesting sound anyway on bass trombone. Right? That's pretty neat, in my opinion. And so, though the landscape of music has changed, one of the things that you might have noticed about my Harmon collection is that I own... Two of these. You might wonder why I own two of these. Well, the simple reason is because I got called to do a record date and they wanted part of that session to be played with the stem in. And then I only had like two measures to get the stem out and then play four bars and then put the stem back in for the rest of the cue. Now, as you can imagine, that's pretty stinking noisy. So fortunately, again, during the break, I was able to run out and buy myself another mute. Fortunately, the record dates paid good, so I could afford to do crazy things like just run out and buy mutes. Ta -da. <laughs> wow, it sounds like I've been drinking beer. Too much beer over there. But uh, again, if you can, when you see it, buy it. Well, I hope you found this interesting. I hope this ties up some things about some of the weird mutes that exist. And, um, hey, maybe I'll see you on the bandstand. Till then.